Today I would like to talk about tube bias, what it is, the three main types, and the pros and cons of each. This is especially important if you are new to tube amp. First of all, tube bias usually only applies to power amplifiers. Most tube preamplifiers do not require biasing. Biasing is what sets how much current flows through the output tubes and is measured in milliamps. There is always going to be an ideal setting for any output tube based on the amplifier it's operated in. The amplifier's internal voltages and transformer ratios are what will determine what bias setting is ideal. Some typical examples of bias settings would be adjusting the bias for an EL34 tube to 45 milliamps, while a KT88 would be set somewhere between 60 and 80 milliamps. Tube amplifiers come in three main flavors when it comes to bias. One is called fixed bias, one is called cathode bias, and one is called auto bias. Fixed bias means there is going to be a screw or knob that you have to adjust whenever you change tubes and check regularly to be sure it's right. Cathode bias means the tube is biased through a resistor and there's nothing to adjust. You never have to do anything and it never fails. Auto bias means the amp is a fixed bias design with a logic circuit that reads the bias setting in real time and then makes adjustments as needed. This means you never have to do anything, but unlike the cathode bias, we can't go so far as to say it never fails. Fixed bias and auto bias make the most power and are therefore the most common. Cathode bias makes less power, but arguably sounds better. So you find it more in amps that focus on sound quality rather than marketing. The fixed bias amps are the ones that you have to adjust. So let's talk about those for a minute. The least expensive fixed bias amps are going to have an adjustment screw or several that you have to adjust with a screwdriver. To know how to adjust it, you will have to hook a voltage tester up to some designated points on the amplifier and slowly adjust the screw until the meter reads the correct voltage. It's not fun. Better designs have knobs and meters so that you don't need tools to make the adjustments and can see at a glance that everything is working properly. What happens if something isn't working properly? It means that a tube has drifted and the bias has changed. Usually it increases. This is a problem because when it gets too high a phenomenon called bias runaway happens. This means that the bias could no longer be controlled by the amplifier and steadily increased until the plates inside the tube got red hot and burned the tube up, as well as the amplifier's circuit board and other internal parts. This is a good reason to avoid inexpensive fixed bias amps if you're new to tubes, especially if they have no meters on them. When there are no meters, there is no way to know when the tube or the bias is drifting until it's too late. Auto bias is probably done as many different ways as there are tube amplifiers, so it's hard to speculate. But many adjust the tubes on the fly, which means that if a tube starts to drift out of spec, the amplifier compensates by changing the bias to maintain the proper range. This creates a condition where you have no way to know when a tube is drifting forcing you to listen to a compromised tube until it gets to a point where it either fails or falls out of range and the amp shuts down. Cathode bias is less efficient because some heat is produced in the resistor that sets the bias. So a 40 watt amp becomes a 30 watt amp. This is a huge problem for marketing because both amps use the same parts and cost the same. But the sound is glorious through its simplicity and it is impossible for a tube to cherry the plates with bias runaway. Even without meters you are safe. In all three cases, fixed bias, auto bias, cathode bias, there will be a specific or select range of tubes that can be used. Cathode bias is the most forgiving in so much as putting a KT88 in an EL34 amp isn't going to melt anything. In fact, most of the time the cathode resistor will set the bias similar with either tube, so the power of the amp remains unchanged. This is a big advantage for people who like to tube roll for different sonic signatures as the process is literally just plug and play with nothing to adjust or monitor. 
Speaking of monitoring, you can't really monitor anything without a meter. This is why we include meters on many of our amplifiers. Meters show you how many milliamps the tubes are drawing while the amp is on, so you can glance at them every time you listen. What are you checking? You are checking to see if the meters read the same, indicating a good set of matching tubes. You are looking for changes. A tube used to read a specific number, and now it is higher or lower relative to what it was and relative to the other tubes. The meters can tell you that a tube is starting to age past its prime and if ignored will eventually fail. This could take months to years depending on how much you listen. It's nice to know well in advance when to change your tubes versus waiting until you have a failure or your amp shuts down. So if you are new to tubes look for cathode biased amplifiers that have meters and there is really no way to fail. You could potentially spare yourself some of the traumatic experiences that launch first time tube uses right back to solid state. Happy listening and have a great day.